Well, hi, thank you for joining me. I'm Roz, I'm one of the pastors on staff and it is so nice to be back with you today. This week and over the next few weeks, we are working our way through the book of 1 Timothy together as a church. We have a great devotional study guide that goes along with this book, which you can actually find on the Eagle Brook app. It was written by our campus pastor, so I would definitely check that out. I looked at it yesterday. It's awesome, so dive into that too. Um, but we are going to be using these daily devos to go deeper into the scripture of First Timothy together as well. So today I'm going to take you through chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. But first, I want you to take a, time, a moment to think about a time when you saw someone do something and it made you realize that you could do it too. What was that thing? Will you share your answers in the comments with me? Maybe you saw a video of Alton Brown um, making a fancy recipe and it gave you a step-by-step -step that encouraged you to try it too. For me, I think of my daughter uh, about two years ago my husband and I were trying to encourage her to learn to ride her bike without training wheels. And as we stood in the street together, a part of her desperately wanted to try it without the training wheels. She, she wanted it. But there was another part of her that was terrified. She thought, nope, I can't do it. She got off her bike and she told my husband and I that she would never ride without training wheels. We didn't want to push it, but a moment later, some friends came confidently riding down the street on their two-wheel bikes. My daughter hopped back on her bike and she learned to ride alongside her friend right then and there. It took her seeing that example to realize that she could do it too. Well, in the scripture we're reading today, Paul is the example. And as we read it together, I'd like you to ask yourself, what is Paul encouraging you to do? If you feel like sharing, I'd love for you to put your answers in the comments as we go. So again, this is from 1 Timothy. It's chapter 1, verses 12 through 17, and I'm reading out of the NLT version. I thank Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has given me strength to do his work. He considered me trustworthy and appointed me to serve him even though I used to blasphemy the name of Christ. But God had mercy on me because I did it in ignorance and unbelief. Oh, how generous and gracious our Lord was. He filled me with the faith and the love that comes from Jesus Christ. And in this, this is a trustworthy saying everyone should accept. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners and I am the worst of them all. But God had mercy on me so that Jesus Christ could use me as a prime example for his great patience with even the worst sinners. Then others will realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life. All honor and glory to God forever and ever. He is the eternal King, the unseen one who never dies. He alone is God, amen. Now, as I read that, what jumped out at you? What, what word maybe stood out or came into your heart? For me, I can't help but feel a parallel with my own story. When I walked through the doors of Eagle Brook, I felt like my sin was too big for God to even forgive me, let alone for him to use me to help others find faith in Jesus Christ. You don't have to share this, but I wonder, have you ever felt that way? Have you ever felt like your sins were just too great for God's mercy? As I came back to Eelbrook week after week, I saw examples of Christians who were imperfect too. People who had messy lives, who looked like me and like Paul and felt like they were the worst sinners of all. But despite their sins, I saw how receiving Christ was changing their lives. Seeing and hearing their stories of redemption, of God's mercy on them, helped me realize that I too could be forgiven, that my sins didn't disqualify me from believing in him and receiving eternal life. Sometimes I wonder how different things would be if I wouldn't have had those examples of imperfect Christians. What would that look like for you? I wonder if I would have felt like I didn't belong at church. Would, have, would I have continued to believe that only people who don't mess up can be used by God? Would I have stopped going to church altogether? 
I think sometimes as we grow in our faith, we can find ourselves on a righteous path. And then it can be tempting to shut the door on our past and pretend like it doesn't exist anymore. But earlier in the same chapter in verse five, Paul says the purpose of my instruction is that all believers would be filled with the love that comes from a pure heart, a clear conscience, and genuine faith. When we share honestly about the moments when God has met us at our lowest point, and then turn those moments around using them for his victory, we are sharing our genuine faith. So what Paul teaches Timothy is that God can use our past to reach others for Christ. If God can use someone as sinful as Paul, someone who murdered Christians, anyone can be used by God. What we learn from Paul is that in this passage, our sins are not what disqualify us from receiving and being an example of God's love. And just importantly, we learn that our sins do not disqualify us from the greater purpose he has for our lives. And as I say those words, I wonder, do you see yourself in that? Do you see yourself as someone who can help others realize that they too can believe in him and receive eternal life? Do you see God's greater purpose for your life? He has a plan for you. He had a plan for Paul. He has a plan for me. So I want to ask you again, what is Paul's example encouraging you to do today? Maybe today you just need to receive God's grace. Maybe you're ready to share your story with someone else and be an example. Or maybe you just need to ask God today to show you his greater purpose for your life. Well, there's one last thing that Paul models for us in this scripture that I want to point out to you, and that's gratitude. The first sentence in the last verse, verse 17, reads, All honor and glory to God forever and ever. And it ends with an exclamation mark. I just love that. Paul is celebrating. He's rejoicing the goodness of God's mercy. He recognizes that all the praise belongs to God and he is grateful to be used by God. So as we finish today, I want to invite you to join me in prayer and we are going to end that prayer by just praising God. I want to encourage you to make this prayer your own. So I'm actually going to go kind of slow. I'm going to pause throughout and I'd love it if during that pause, you would just fill that space with your own words, your own thoughts. So let's pray. God, we come before you today to acknowledge that we are sinners and we confess those sins to you now. Lord, help us to turn away from these sins by growing in our relationship with you and leaning into your love for us. We ask you for your forgiveness, and as we release these sins to you, Lord, help us to remember that you love us anyway, that they don't disqualify us from helping move your kingdom forward, God, from sharing our authentic and genuine faith with other people. And God, we ask that as we receive your forgiveness, we will extend forgiveness to others too specifically those who we name now. And God, through your mercy, search our hearts and show us how you want us to be an example to others so that they too can believe in you and receive eternal life. Help us to know your purpose for our lives, God. We ask that you reveal that to us now. And God, we lift our hands and hearts to you in gratitude. If you're praying with me right now, would you just take a moment to raise your hands to God? 
to exalt him. We lift our hands to you and our hearts to you, God, in gratitude. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your hand in celebrating the things that we are celebrating in our lives today, which we praise you for now. Thank you for your unwavering love for me and for all of your children. Thank you for trusting us to be examples in our lives to other people so that they can know your love, God, so that they can be welcomed into your kingdom and that they can receive your glory too. God, I pray that the people watching will be moved by you today, moved into some type of action, um, encouraged, encouraged to move forward in what you're calling them to do, God, the greater purpose that you have for their life. Help them to know that they will never be disqualified from being able to be used by you, God. And so we thank you for the wonderful opportunity to serve you, Lord. And I pray that we will step into whatever you are calling us into today boldly, with confidence and trust that all of the glory in the end will be given back to you. We honor you, we love you, God, and we thank you for this day. Help us to serve you well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I hope this was encouraging to you. It's so encouraging to me to see you here, and I hope you, to see you back tomorrow. I'll be watching along with you. Take care.